bombs, nuclear bombs. They're so dangerous that we entrust them to the most responsible and competent people in our nation. We have extremely secure systems that protect us from anything going wrong because should something go wrong, it can go incredibly wrong incredibly quickly. And that's why we entrust them to the people who know exactly what they're doing. You know how it goes. You accidentally install a game on dad's computer and it causes all kinds of problems. Well, that's sort of what happened in America in November 1979, except the game was a tape programmed to simulate a Soviet nuclear strike and dad's computer was the NORAD early warning system that warned against any Soviet missile strike. Oops. The story goes a little like this. Shortly before 9am on November 9th, the early warning computers at the Pentagon's National Military Command Center showed a huge number of Soviet missile launches targeting US command infrastructure. Interceptor fighters were scrambled, the president's doomsday plane took off, bizarrely without the president on board, and preliminary alerts were issued to the vast network of missile silos under the American West, warning them that the US was under attack and to prepare to launch a counter-assault. Except, of course, it wasn't. A tip-off from a young officer on his first day who recognised the training programme and analysis of satellite data proved that there was no attack and the alarm was cancelled. It was rather close to the wire, though, because the alert was called off with just 2 minutes and 12 seconds on the clock. That's 2 minutes and 12 seconds from nuclear Armageddon. But incredibly, this wasn't the only time the world was nearly ended by a computer glitch. Just one year later, the early warning systems once again flashed with warnings of an incoming nuclear assault. First two missiles were shown, then 200. Then they all disappeared before reappearing once again. Different control stations were getting different numbers and trajectories, startling the US command. Was this a new Soviet scrambling weapon designed to confuse them? Once again, aircraft were launched and the army braced to retaliate. Fortunately, the memory of the training tape incident was still raw and there was an element of scepticism. Which is lucky, because the US was actually being attacked by a single faulty computer chip. But the most terrifying incident came from the other side of the world, behind the Iron Curtain. The USSR's early warning satellites relied on spotting the flaming silhouettes of US missiles as they skimmed the edge of space. However, on September 26, 1983, one satellite perfectly lined up with the sun and the US missile silos, reflecting light off the clouds that made it look as though a group of missiles were flying through the sky. This freakish quirk of weather came perilously close to ending civilization as we know it. In fact, the world was only saved by the eagle-eyed actions of one man, Lieutenant Colonel Stanislav Petrov of the USSR's Sepakov-15 nuclear control bunker. Whilst most officers would have retaliated immediately, Petrov noticed that only a handful of missiles had apparently been fired, not the vast swarm he'd been trained to expect. So what did he do? Well, he simply didn't tell his senior officers, risking the annihilation of the USSR because, as he later said, when people start a war, they don't start it with only five missiles. You can't do much damage with just five missiles. Well, that's a reassuring thought. If it had been just a little bit cloudier, if it had looked like a few more missiles were being fired, the world might just have ended because of the weather. I think we should just turn it all off. Let's just get rid of it. It's scary. I don't like it. No. I think it's remarkable that at a time of such crisis, when all the computers, everything around you is melting down, every red light is flashing and it's saying the Soviets are attacking, yeah. the Reds are coming, that someone, somewhere, has the good sense mm. and calm about them to go, hang on a moment, it didn't look quite right. Yeah, I'm not I'm, pressing the button. I, I'm sure he wouldn't have sounded like that. No. So thank you to work experience man at the Pentagon, <laughs> because without you, uh, I would never have been born.